We are back. After a little bit of downtime due to some unforeseen illness, we are back in action here, and we're talking about bread pudding today. Stay tuned. It's coming up. All right. Like I said, we're back in action. Uh, Something about the winter months that tend to make it a little bit difficult to stay healthy when you have little ones and everybody else seems to have some sort of illness going around, even though I'm huddled up in the studio most of the week. Couldn't avoid it this year. Go figure. So in any case, we're here to talk about bread pudding. And this is the season of decadence. I mean, we're in the midst of carnival season. We are quite literally just uh, what about a week and a half away from Mardi Gras Day. And so we figured one last little hurrah before Mardi Gras as far as making something that if you have, as uh, Wilford Brimley likes to say, uh, diabetes, we, you probably would want to avoid this after Mardi Gras season. But David is in the house with me. And let's go ahead and bring him in. Hey, I'm back. Hey, you're back. And I'm back. Best to get it done now uh, because uh, we, not to tease something too much, but we have something fun mm-hmm. to talk about at the end of the show that yep. uh, I'm really excited about and um, I cannot get sick for. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> so we got to, we got to stay healthy. So, uh, so again, I mentioned bread pudding and it's interesting because for me personally, bread pudding was not something that I really was interested in at all as a child. It was kind of what yeah. the old folks ate, right? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm serious, at least for me. <laughs> I don't know about you, yeah. but for me, you know, when there's like, you know, mom, I would say, I brought some bread pudding. I'm like, Ugh. You know, and it was just, it, it wasn't, it was deflating. And then probably the part that was the yeah. most deflating was the raisins inside there. And I was like, okay, hell no. I mean, it, for what a five-year-old thinks in terms of the equivalent of a hell no at five years old, that's what I felt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I just, I, I really couldn't, I couldn't see myself really enjoying anything with raisins in it and it just, you, you know, to be to be honest with you, actually, now that I think about it, not too long ago, I guess it was about, I don't know, six, nine months ago, I was at a French bakery not too far from my house. And for some reason, I was craving a cinnamon roll. And I remember you telling me about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. And talk about a bait and switch, man. I, I walked in there and I saw this nice honking cinnamon roll with the icing on top and i'm like that is me i am all about that and then i took yeah. a bite and i tasted my first lumpy raisin i was like ah oh. and it and i was instantly transported back in time to when i was a kid picking that stuff out of the of the you know the the pastry because it's like who the hell eats this stuff and it was just i don't know it, it was never really something that i was uh, attracted to but yeah I'm, i mean i i ate them as a kid like you know out of the little uh sun it was sun kissed or sun made whatever sun made yeah uh, the little red box yeah. yeah yeah little red box you know i like them like that now and i ate raisin bran cereal but what was disappointing to me and especially it was either like either a school function or when you started working and was when somebody bringing cookies and you look over there and you see some a cookie with with something in it and you're thinking oh man it's chocolate chip and yeah you go and you grab it and it's like the biggest disappointment in the world it it's, not, to be oatmeal it's, like, oh, it's not chocolate chip it's like oh god yeah yeah i you know so when we set out to do this recipe actually i don't know when it was it was before i started the restaurant i came across this white chocolate recipe mm-hmm. right I was at a restaurant and I, was, and I, anything with white chocolate, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is about white chocolate, but never look back, really never look yeah. back. So, yeah. Yeah. I was trying to think of when I, the first time I had bread pudding too, cause and I became curious about it and I, and I, and you know, you looked at the ingredients and other than, you know, if it had raisins or something in it, it was like, 
Oh, that you got something with a with the alcohol based sauce on top. Sounds interesting. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> well, you know, come to find out, I, I was doing some research on that, and I think that you know, bread pudding exists around the world, right? There's there's yep. all kinds of places where you can get a form of bread pudding. What I noticed was that it it's fairly unique to have like a rum or bourbon or boozy based sauce. Yeah. In the New Orleans area or Gulf South region, whereas mm-hmm. you go out to other parts of the world and and the emphasis on alcohol is not as great, I guess is the best way to yeah. put it. So, but what was interesting is that this rum sauce that we used today, yeah. it uh, has no alcohol in it. So, the yeah. the recipe we made today has really no. It's it's safe for kids. It's safe for the whole yeah. family, yeah. which is great. And and if mm-hmm. you don't drink, then it's it's also really good. It's it's got the yeah. the essence of rum, but without the the booziness to it. And of course, yeah. it, what you could do if you really wanted to spruce it up, you could douse it in bourbon towards the end, and 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 add a little bit of kick to it. That's what I was going to say. Is I was looking at the same some of the histories too, and just like you said, it's from all over the world. Was, oh yeah, Mom Papa's again. Yep, like exactly, said. exactly. We didn't talk about that, but yeah, we yeah. used we use this and. You know, that's all it's in the box. Yep, that's it. Two things, and one is clearly labeled rum sauce. Yeah, and that's I had that. the advantage also. And you get two eggs, six tablespoons of butter, three cups of milk, and I actually had the ability to get some of these uh, French pistolets, which were made in Kenner. So I actually had them in my freezer for a little bit. So I was just thought they'd be a better representation of a New Orleans style. Yeah. Get you with your fancy mixer. <laughs> oh, sorry. I mean, oh, hey, man, it's we, got, we got it as a wedding uh, gift, and it's been very helpful. So, <laughs> um, but you, you get the you pick, uh, pour the ingredients, the, the mix, the milk, yep. the melted butter, melted butter, yeah, pour it. <laughs> <laughs> the eggs. Hey, the eggs, yay! Yeah, and so. And and it's it, it this thing doesn't it's kind of like you know at this point it it reminds you of a. Uh, a pamperdu or egg wash. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because basically, all you're really doing is creating a custard base to, to soak your bread. Exactly. Uh, croutons in, if you will. Now, um, now, did you spend, or did you let these soak at all? I let them soak about five minutes, but I think you can let them soak a lot more. And there's my, where my white chocolate comes in—a third of a cup. Right. Right. I I think you could honestly have let it go a little longer. Um, one of the recipes I looked at actually had somebody, uh, cooking it from scratch where they let it sit five hours. Yeah. I actually mentioned that in my, my video too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah Cause I saw the same thing five hours. I'm like, I, I don't have that patience at all. <laughs> so, yeah. but I did, uh, I think I let mine sit about 20 minutes, but yeah, kind of came out yeah. just like that. It's supposed to be moist, but not soupy. According to exactly. the, wow, look at that! That that uh, poofed up real nice. Yeah, I was I uh, was pretty impressed. That's why I made sure I captured it on film there. Yeah, and then um, let it and it kind of deflated a <laughs> yeah. bit. Not really, but it's dense. I yeah, mean, it's see, very dense. That's your typical bread pudding consistency there. Yep, and that's it unadorned with anything. And then the sauce is just once again, like you said, there's no rum in there unless you want to add some at the end um butter and then once again six tablespoons and then three i mean a third of a cup of milk right and um i'm not sure what it is this this little mix that she's got oh i say that she's got that um mampa paul has it looks very much similar but you see it in the same like with the pralines yep. and yep. um and the king cake there's, it's it's definitely uh, some type of food science there. That's, but I mean, it pulls together this this sauce, and it just thickens up. And yeah. It's, it's and then you pour it over the top of it. Oh yeah. Well yeah. That was that's and that, that looks awesome. Yeah. The, <clears throat> something about it. Uh, the the way that the this particular thing melted. Oh man. I tell you what. You mentioned earlier today that your wife had 
commented on the fact yeah. that it did not taste like it was a mix or anything like that. It was, right. it was, it came off. Welcome, Cajun Lynn, by the way. Um, Thank you, Cajun Lynn. I, I, I really think that I ended up with was probably a little bit different than yours, but uh, I was also using what they call French bread yeah. up here. All right, let's get started. So we've got our Mom Papal's mix for bread pudding with the rum sauce. And this is what we're gonna start with. We have, I've got more or less everything laid out already. I've got uh, my milk, got some melted butter, and I've also got French bread. So we'll have white chocolate plus rum sauce plus the bread pudding. So it should be really good. All right, so first things first, let's get started. We'll mix in our ingredients. And this is the, the mix, pretty intense. So we'll add that in. Now I've also, I've already preheated or begun the preheating process for my oven, 350. All right, some butter goes in. This is melted six tablespoons of butter. And then three cups of milk. We only use whole milk here. None of that skim milk crap. The instructions are quite clear here. It says you mix everything uh, and then you just, uh, you whisk it all together. The mixture should be moist, but not soupy. So let's go ahead and get that started. Mix all this together first. All right, that looks good. So this is my idea of folding in. So now we just start folding this in. One of the variations I've seen is you kind of get this all mixed together and then you let it sit for as much as five hours. I've seen five hours in the fridge, but we're just gonna keep getting it so all these guys are nice and coated. And then probably what I'll do is whatever's left over, I'll just pour that into the dish as well. Looking good, nice and coated. So I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this kind of soak up for a little bit. Try and soak up as much of that mixture, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And then I'll transfer that into the pan and we'll get it in. Now what I'm gonna do, I've got some white chocolate chips here. Now it says to fold it into the mixture. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm also gonna create a white chocolate sauce. I'm just gonna go ahead and scoop it in. All right, so this is what it looks like before it goes into the oven. It is dense, for sure. All right, there she goes. All right, now that the bread pudding is in the oven, got about an hour and 15 minutes, a few moments later. The bread pudding is actually cooking very nicely, so it's almost done, it's almost ready. So I'm gonna get the praline sauce going, and I'm also gonna do the white chocolate sauce all at once. So let me first start. I've got two pots here. So this is the rum sauce mixture. And now we're gonna set that to a medium heat and mix this all together. And the white chocolate sauce is actually, it's pretty straightforward. It will be heavy cream, put the white chocolate chips, the remainder of my white chocolate chips, which is about six ounces or so. And then I'm going to add the butter in and get that all nice and thickened. This reminds me a lot of the praline mixture. So once this guy starts to boil, I'll pull that off of the heat I'll add in my butter, I'll add in my white chocolate chips, and then mix that all together. All right, let's take a look and see what we see. Can you see that? Oh yeah, nice and good. Okay, that's about ready. Pretty soon here. 
All right, so we're starting to get a little bit of a boil here. So that should be good to go. Mm. Oh yeah, that is definitely a rum sauce. So we're gonna bring it to a boil and then reduce the temperature. So this should, uh, the timing should actually work out really well. We should have everything kind of coming to, together at the right moment. Okay, we're boiling now, so we're gonna bring it down. I'm gonna remove it from the heat for a little bit. And I'm gonna set that timer for five minutes. There we go. So you can't quite see that, but you can on here. You can see the mixture here. This is what it looks like. The electric induction tops, it tends to hold its heat really well, even if I turn off the heat. So I'm gonna let that cool down just a tad and then I'll put it back on there. And this is coming up to boil. So let's go ahead and pull that bread pudding out of the oven. There you go. Well, that's a little bit. See that right there? That looks mighty fine. All right, I'm gonna put this here. See if I can pan over a little bit. That looks good. So we've got some boiling action going on here, which is good. Okay, so now we're gonna add the butter and the chocolate. I'm gonna remove from heat. Kinda see it. Let's go over here. Just don't want it right on that induction top. Add our butter in. So again, this is heavy cream. Uh, I'm using unsalted butter, just two tablespoons of unsalted butter, and then about six to eight ounces of white chocolate chips. See, it's nice and smooth. Oh, that's looking good. The butter has totally melted, so is the chocolate. Okay, that's five minutes for this guy. So the rum sauce is done, and the white chocolate sauce has got to make sure everything is mixed up. All right, as I mentioned, this is our thermometer. This is an instant read thermometer. And we are reading, I would say that's sufficient. 195, can you see that here? 200, let's go ahead and cut this guy. Now, typically, since I buttered this, it should just, yep, slice up real nice. Look at that. Oh man. Look at that. That is some yummy looking stuff right there. All right, so now let's drizzle on our rum sauce. Okay, now comes the fun part, the taste test. More moments later. Okay, general consensus, right on. That's good, I'm happy with that. First time out the gate, first time, first time I made bread foot and turned out all right. All right, <laughs> so there we go. And Jeremy's yeah. edit, editing skills on full display. So how did yours, I mean, I, I just cooked some up here and it, um, let's just say that it tastes better than it looks. <laughs> I think mine just kind of, uh, through the heat, it just kind of separated out a little bit before I... The, the whole uh, pudding or the uh, just the sauce? I put everything. I probably should have just put the sauce. Yeah, I separate. I, I did the... because. Uh, well, they are separate. The sauces and everything are separate. It's just that I, I heated oh. up the bread pudding again. Yeah, I did too. I just uh, did about 15 seconds in the microwave. And then uh, I heated up the sauce and poured it on top. 
um, because I made it earlier this morning. That's um, thanks, Joanne. Kind of, kind of an interesting breakfast. But um, (laughs) the girls, my my daughters uh, got up a little later and they they heated it up, and that's kind of what we had settled on. So, uh, hey, man, I figured the the taste will have wed by now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, mine is here, and you can see. Yeah, like I said, it just look. It went like, yeah, it kind of yeah. blew up. But <clears throat> so there's there's the white uh, the white chocolate sauce is here, mm-hmm. you know, and that that actually does add a, a component to it. You can see the white chocolate chips. You know, there's mm-hmm. there's there's some here and here, and you know, there's they're there. But yeah, I I got to do that's some one thing that I think I could probably do a better job of is kind of keeping things together. A little bit, but yeah, you know, truth be told, it's I mean, my, I don't know good. how well mine can be seen from this little camera here. Well, you had uh, uh you had sent over that image, that one, yeah, that looks, yeah, yeah, you definitely should. I mean, and I, you know, you can make it making this from scratch is, is obviously it's it's all in the details when it comes to the the as you called it david the the dredge the the part that the you know the bread soaks in but yeah. for me you know the the bread itself like my wife prefers the <clears throat> the kind of the crunchy bits of you yeah. know the the top and um and i do too i actually i think that that's something i, yeah. I really enjoy so i yeah i i'm really excited about this one i just i feel like i could do a bit a little bit better with the presentation of well, it but yeah, I mean, once once again, it's a lot of, uh, you know, the more you do it, the better you get at it type thing. Um, <clears throat> I think, too, that, you know, going back to when we were talking about, like, what a pudding was or defined as, a, the, you know, the old English one. But then there's also, like I said, there's the other stuff that, Joanne, you might have missed the beginning. We, we're not real fans of the Yeah, I <laughs> Sorry, anyway. Joanne. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll have to watch the replay. We kind of gave the big thumbs down uh, to the raisins, but I know I know a lot of people like it. I just uh, I had a bad experience with it, and I've been forever scarred. <laughs> but anyway, you know, they, they were describing like uh, the pudding in general is eggs, milk, flour, I guess, or, or some type of uh, starch that's put together, and when it when it bakes, oh, my, my screen fell down behind me. <laughs> oh yeah, it did. Uh oh. Yeah. The, the, it's been revealed. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll finish this, oh. and then anyway, it's like um, <laughs> you end up with the crustiness on top that kind of keeps everything in. So uh, let me go with just the the set here. Uh, this is some video that my cousin sent me. He's the one on top there, kind of jamming with the glasses. Uh, but they he rides in a parade called Bacchus, and. Um, Bacchus is, you know, God of Wine. Um, it's a, it's traditionally on Sunday night before Mardi Gras, and he he and his father ride in that that parade, and then his mother rides. It was it. It's Iris. 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 Okay, so we're going to yeah. be interviewing all three of them for next week's show, and then we'll be able to, we'll we'll talk about that, and then Sunday night we will live stream from there. Now I I don't know. We're gonna work out the logistics of that. Of course, if you miss it, it'll be on replay. But we'll have that. Yeah, is that the Saint Og band down there? It is the Saint Og band. Yep. Yeah, I was because I was just thinking of the uh, the loss of uh, our weather yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Rest um, in peace. Uh, Creed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Saint Og graduate. Yes, he was a Saint Og graduate. One other thing that we kind of teased at the beginning. Oh, uh, Ben says the uh, boom boom has struck. So I don't. I yeah. Don't, <laughs> it's, the boom boom, I think, is a, a term we use in Mobile for the. Mardi Gras parade. Oh, okay. Or, or maybe it has something to do with the raisins. I don't know. Or, or, or the fact that your <laughs> set fell down behind you. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway, yeah. so pleased to announce, uh, David and I, that we're going to be attending uh, Chef John Fulce's boucherie at the end of this month yeah. in uh, just outside of Baton Rouge at his uh, White Oak okay. Estates, and. David is going to be manning the the Boudin station, correct? Yep. And yep. so we're we're going to be down there, and we're going to broadcast live from the boucherie. 
Uh, we're also going to be conducting a lot of interviews with a lot of different people, and it should be a really killer time. So, uh, so this will be yeah. the first time that the Rainy Cajun show is actually being broadcast from Louisiana, <laughs> so yeah. uh, which is kind of fun. So, David, I, I wanted you to kind of recap. I've got the the uh, your info here about the the boucherie. So, if, uh, we talked about yeah. this a little bit a couple of weeks ago. And tickets are still on sale for this, correct? This is on yeah, the 24th? as far as I know. Okay. Yeah, you go to eventbrite.com, and you'll see the, uh, the link for the boucherie. It'll be three weeks from today. As we've kind of teased, um, there will be eight stations that, uh, like I said, if you are interested in getting there at 8 o'clock, they've got stations already set up that have the ingredients already prepped because – what you're trying to do is demonstrate in a roughly four hour period, three to four hour period of what these dishes are. To demonstrate all these, like in the case of Boudin, it's easy enough to make the main ingredients and just at, at the end split half the batch and as they did in the old days and then uh, poach it and, and show how it's done. But we'll be sitting there and we'll, you'll see, as you see like the black iron uh, cauldron there, we'll be cooking and there'll be two leads for most tables, you know, you come up to, you walk around, they'll be, they have like drinks you can purchase there. You can walk around uh, and talk to everybody and find out about what uh, most of us know about these different recipes. And so um, in my case, like I said, with the Louisiana background, uh, Vance Vokerson, who will be leading the table on the Italian sausage and smoked sausage. He's a, a Creole gentleman from New Orleans, a uh, Vokerson, uh, family sausages. This guy's great. He's, he's a wealth of knowledge. He's been doing this basically all his life and he's my age. He's about 55. He, he's somebody you've got to go see. Uh, but you'll do the hogshead cheese. You'll have the Italian sausages. You'd have andouille, maudelaine, which is a vachery dish that Spuddy uh, Fauché talked about making. And another guy, uh, Shine Fulse, makes over there in vachery, kind of an oversized andouille. And then you'll have cracklins and or gratons, as we say. Uh, they'll have a coon and rooster stew. In traditional times, families would get together, neighbors would get together, and everybody would have tasks. The little kids would be getting sticks and everything to to stoke the fire that you put the cauldron on. The, the women were doing a lot of the cutting up and cleaning of you know the green onions, the onions and such. The men were doing various things, scraping the hog, cutting, breaking it down. From that standpoint, you'll see uh, like a, a different demonstrations. But then in addition, Chef John will be doing uh, this year, he's unveiling his uh, signature line of rums and bourbons that he's been making on the site there uh, for purchase and, and taste. So anyway, you'll do all that. And like I said, you'll get that in the first um, three hours and the grounds are like I said, it's either 30 or so acres. Uh, he's got yeah. a pond. He's got a uh, little small beehive. He's got three or four old vintage John Deere tractors you can look at. The hog pen, the, the rabbit pen. Unfortunately, his melitons haven't come back yet, but hopefully they'll be coming back. Beautiful little gardens and such there. And then at 12 o'clock, there'll be a big buffet. And you'll get to taste all samplings of all these dishes that we've made Plus uh, some others, you know, have his white beans, have some jambalaya. His he's got a full kitchen there, and his the uh, Nickel State Culinary uh, students yep. will be there helping us. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Cool. Well, so, so oh, oh yep. And you get these little, and if you want to take it home with you, I mean, bourbon. You're, you oh, get copies nice. of the, uh, the the boucherie recipe booklets. Oh, cool. Okay. So they have all the recipes that we will be cooking: the uh, smoked andouille sausage hogshead cheese and then depending on some of the other folks who will do like sometimes we've had some folks of latin latino origin they did like tamales uh some native yeah, american yeah. fried breads i saw that so, one of the bayou wild, wild videos yeah that's yeah. cool yeah so you'll you'll get some of those recipes so, like i said if you leave there hungry it's your own fault yeah right exactly <laughs> I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, please ask and for those of you watching on the replay to like and subscribe because we got a lot of cool stuff and we're not just going down. Uh, let's put it this way. We're not just going down to Louisiana just to film the boucherie. We got a lot on our plate. So I'm really looking forward to it. No pun intended on the plate, but 
<laughs> we will have a lot going on. All right. All right. Well, so the, thanks right. for everybody for joining us. Uh, and uh, for those of you ben, who. Ben, Joanne, Cajun Lynn. Yep. Yep. And Ben, and of course. So anyway, thanks a lot. And we're going to, uh, we'll see you guys all in the after show.